let's pause that. Give me just a second here. Hope everybody's doing well. Kind of an exciting day, Friday into the close, man. Very exciting close. Um, market opened. If you remember, I went live. Was it? I think it was Friday. And I was saying, hey, don't get don't get bearish, man. A lot of people were getting bearish. And I was using the illustration, you know, when you're sometimes you're at work and you're thinking about vacation, then you get on vacation, and you start thinking about work. You gotta stay in the moment. You gotta you gotta stay where you're at. So if the market's moving up, you should be thinking about it moving up. Um, if the market's moving down, then you should be bearish, right? So don't don't get ahead of it. The problem is if you get ahead of it, then it's hard to make money when it really – then you have to be right, right? And I'm, I've given up on trying to be right, and I just want to ride the, ride the wave of the market. So, I mean, right now – so let's look at just some of the, you know, on Sundays, I like to do more teaching than, than really just looking at stocks. Like I want to kind of explain to you what big picture, what is that pillar number seven, big picture of what I'm looking at. And, you know, first I'm just, just look at the chart. I mean, it just looks like it's going up, right? So keeps it simple for me. I wouldn't even be looking for a reason for it to go down if... If I look and it looks like it's going up. Um, a couple things. So, you know, I believe the market moves in four stages. So whenever I come to a chart, I'm going to try to quickly identify. And you'll see with actual stock charts, with stocks, the patterns are more obvious or – that's not even a word, huh? More obvious – or cleaner – then when you look at an index, so this is the S&P 500. We're trading at 3,271. In, the, in my newsletter, the petersreport.com, I refer to the S&P as the wind. So this is the wind at our back. So you can feel comfortable being pretty aggressive on your trades when you get this going in the right direction. You know, When this is going down, you're going to have a hard time trading. Um, you know, you might catch some, there's always stocks that are doing their own thing, but as a general rule, when the market's going down or below this green line, it tends to be bearish. And when it breaks out above it, it tends to be bullish as a general rule. And we get little dips here and there. So these are moments of caution, but when you see it turn around and come right back, you know, it tells you, okay, Hey, rally back on. Right? So as I'm looking at this, I'm first thing I'm noticing is, you know, what's the general direction? Well, that's up, you know. Um, and then core to what I'm looking at is this green line, the 20-day moving average. Now, it's it's layers, right? So all of this is layers. No one thing is more important than the other. Um, so it's price can be below this and it still be bullish um, but the first sign that there's problems is or is that it's below the green line so let's look at so if i'm looking at a big and if you want to look even bigger picture so this is a daily chart each one of these bars is one day right one day one day one day and so you never want to let one day be overwhelming uh overwhelming evidence <clears throat> um even this day here this day here was a little scary you see this big move down you 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 really want to be you want to be careful getting bearish or worrying too much about the downside when statistically the market goes up more than it goes down so you don't want to you want to try to make your bets to the long side but there's other things that we can look at that just help us. This RSI you see here. This is an indicator. Now, all an indicator is, if you're new to indicators, and some of you are like, yeah, no shit, I know an indicator. I know. Not everybody does. All an indicator tells us is, well, like its name implies, indication. All indicators are based upon price. 
all indicators are based on price. It's taken price, and they may have some sort of different mathematical calculation going on in the back. And in the old days, guys used to calculate these by hand. Like these, there's math formulas for all these. If you ever go look them up, it's outside of my uh, outside of my purview. But I don't need to. Like we don't need to know how to fix a car to drive it. So you don't need to know the math behind this. You might want to look at it. But this is another one. So I'm looking at where's price in relation to this green line? Is it above it or below it? And where's this RSI? This tells us a couple things. This this measures the velocity of price. Not has price gone too high per se, but has it gone too high or too low too fast? That's what it's measuring. And what happens whenever you see this hit these points, you're going to see price tend to, I call them anchor points, Price is going to tend to stop moving and then go down. It's exactly what we saw here. So I'll use these points in my trading as a spot to take to sell shares. Now, there's a lot of different ways you could use these things, man. A lot of different ways you could use these. Um, you could use the RSI in your buy and hold account as ways to... Lock in, you know, let's say you bought a bunch of shares down here. It runs up. You sell some shares. You take that those shares you sold and you buy some other stock. So there's a lot of ways to use the RSI. But it's just one, again, one layer, one piece of the puzzle is like, where's price? The big picture price is going up. So if you talk to someone who's bearish, this is just a dumb person. Like, price is going up. And so if you're bearish then you're 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 just going against what's actually happening. So it's kind of like it's raining outside and you walk outside and you're like, "No, it's not. No, it's raining. Price is going up." So we can begin to look at these things and make things super simple. And so we don't have to be worried or concerned. Um let's look at Ulta. Ulta's a new trade we got in. And, and cuz this shows another layer of what I'm looking at. Another layer besides this indicator, and you should spend some time reading on this indicator. Like this part of the, uh, if you're trying to master trading or investing or, or, or learning about stocks, time should be spent studying. This RSI, most of you guys will spend a lot of time on a lot of dumb shit in your life, and you will never understand this indicator because you don't take time to sit and read it, what it really means. What does it mean when it goes extreme? And what does it mean when it are extreme low and extreme high? And how could that benefit your trading? So it, again, a layer. Another layer that I talk about in my book, The Money Flow, is this idea of support and resistance. A lot of people understand it. I don't think they use it right. Look at this support we see with Ulta right now. Look at it. Hits here, stops. Hits here, stops. Hits here, stops. Hits here, stops. So we're seeing clear support. I mean, you could run it out all the way to here. So when I look at that chart, that's what my mind is drawn to. Okay, wow. You know, I can see this solid support. I also see it's below the 200-day moving average. You know, that's good. We see it's been here before, right? It's been here before. So one of the concepts that I teach in the book is price has memory, and that's what this is. So price has memory. It's been here before it stopped. It remembered that it stopped. It remembered that it stopped. It remembered that it stopped. So price has memory. Well, it not only does it to the downside, but it does it to the upside. And so as we begin to look at this, I could, I'm going to take all this into – these are all little pieces – little layers right so this is a swing trade that i put on because we were breaking out but the breakout has kind of stalled out but and we're below the 20 remember i was talking about this 20 day moving average is super important but look we have solid support here so there's no reason to get out of this trade it it did what i thought it would do right it's holding support so if I was trading this, and again, I'm not a day trader, so I wouldn't be moving in and out. If you're a day trader, none of this will make any sense to you because it just won't apply. You can't be a day trader and at the same time, you know, you got to figure out what you're doing if you're trading. Same with investing. A lot of times 
people will be, quote, investors, and then all of a sudden they're traders, and then now they're back to investors. So what I try to do to keep this real simple in my mind is I have buy and hold investment accounts, and then I have a trading account, and I don't mix them. So when I log into this account, I put on a different hat. So in my buy and hold account, I'm looking to accumulate shares. So I want to use the concept of the money flow, all the six different layers that I look at, to my advantage in the buy and hold. So a lot of times in that, I'm just looking for these big stage four sell-offs. And we'll talk about, you know, these are stages. Where's the, the diagram? Which you should be sick of seeing this if you're a friend of mine. This should be burned into your brain, this picture right here. So when I look at stocks or think about stocks, this is all I'm seeing. What stage is this stock in? So if I'm looking at the chart, are we coming down? If we're coming down, then I know we're in a stage four. You don't buy stage fours. That's a downtrend. You don't buy downtrends. You could short a downtrend, but you don't buy downtrend. If I'm over here and we're ripping higher, then I know we're in an uptrend, right? So this pattern will emerge on the charts. So if we're in an uptrend, I'm not looking to short it. That would be dumb. I mean, five minute, I'm not looking to, I just let it run, right? It's these stages of congestion. You'll see where it tops out, starts to go sideways, or it stops dropping and starts to go sideways. These are the key points that I'm looking for. These sideways motion you're going to see. And up here, I'm looking to probably sell some if I got in down here. So if I got in on a stage one and now we've run up, now we're in a stage three as a trader, I'd be wanting to downsize the trade. Um, so again, these are just layers. So as I look at a chart, I'm layering, I'm layering each piece of this. I'm like, okay, what, what stage are we in? So, and they're not, these stages take a minute. They can be very quick. Stage two, stage three, stage four decline, right? Stage one started to break out and then it's kind of paused. And when it breaks out, remember I said price has memory, one of the layers? So that would be our target. We would expect it to go where it was before. Just like I expect it when it sold off, where's it going to go? Where it was before. So if I'm looking at this stage four sell-off on Ulta, look at this. So that confirmed it. Price closed below the 20, um, you know, the 5, the 10, the 20, everything's pointing down. MACD's pointing down, momentum's pointing down, everything's pointing down, right? Down, 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 down. Where's the next target? That's what I'm looking for, next target. Right around in there. That's exactly where it stopped. Now, could you short this? Yeah, I don't really do much of that. I like to short index funds like uh, the S&P 500 or maybe gold or bonds. I'm not big on shorting stocks into a bull market. I think that's an amateur play. I think you're an amateur if you're shorting stocks in a bull market. You should short stocks in a bear market. That's what most professionals do. Now, if you're new and excited and you really want to be right, if your game is always trying to be right, then you're going to you know, throw caution to the wind. So for me, I have fundamental belief like a religion. Uh, and I, those aren't compromise. So if the S&P 500 is going up, then the wind is to the upside trying to short would be a bad idea. Now, if it changed, if the wind changed and the market turned down, then hey, have at it. The market, the wind is now to the downside, right? And if you want to short, that's when you start shorting. When you see guys shorting when the market is up, these are people trying to be right. So let's look at Tesla. Tesla's ruined a lot of investment careers because people were trying to be right. Why would you short this? It's going up. The market's up. The stock is up. Everything's up. And you say, well, yeah, but logically and fundamentally, it doesn't make sense. That doesn't matter. Stocks don't move based on logic and fundamentals. I mean, ultimately, they get to true value. But the day-to-day -day movement of stocks is based on fear and greed. Fear and greed. People get greedy. They'll run the price up. People get fearful. They'll run the price down. And it's because of fear and greed that there's even a market to trade. So you tell me. You tell me, all of the dipshits that we're selling over here, what is different about Tesla today than over here? 
What's the difference? They're not selling any more cars. I mean, what changed fundamentally about this company from here to here? Fear and greed. Nothing. Nothing changed. I mean, we had the coronavirus, right? But that hit all stocks. And then where was your son? Where's the fear gauge? Right there. So the moment a stock that you're following as an investor, you start seeing this on your screen. If you're an investor, then you look to buy, right? Why? You want to buy fear. Isn't that what the greatest investor of all time says? You want to buy fear or buy fear and sell greed? This is greed. And look what happens. It tops out. <clears throat> it happened here too. You hit the, the fear and look, it starts going sideways. But it never went below the 20. It never went into a stage four decline. It just kept going, right? So we have to have a way of handling this. And it can't be shorted because that'd be dumb. It can't be sell it all because, well, that'd be dumb. It's still going up. But we, we can't deny there's a yellow light flashing, right? Like price is kind of high. Uh, uh, so, again, a layer. So as you begin to learn how to use the RSI, the RSI is your friend. It's not to keep you out of a trade. It's to keep you appropriately in a trade. How, how much should you have in a trade? And should you, you know, I would rather be buying more on this. I don't want to buy any on this. Like, I want to wait and see what happens, right? Um, so, if we're looking at this pattern right here, where do we think Tesla is? What you're starting to see is right here, right? So, you've had price run up. It's going sideways. And almost always, take this up a little bit on YouTube, almost always, almost always, when you hit a stage three, the RSI is going to be on an extreme. It doesn't have to be, but that's what I like to see. Like you want to see that because it makes this confirmation even better. But again, in, in, in markets, nothing is certain. So, and we see that. But over here, we saw it too, right? And it stopped. I mean, it almost always stops for a minute. For at least a minute, it stops. And then you see this sideways movement. We saw it over here. Get a little further back, man. You see it over here. It got up into the extreme zone and started going sideways. So it's it's an it's an alert. It's an alert. It comes prior to the sell-off. Now, this is a unicorn stock. This one's been extremely, um, you know, just keeps going, man. I don't know what to say. But it's starting to break down now. So is this a stage four decline? Maybe. So there's a there's a pheno I don't want to say phenomena that doesn't sound right. These stage threes can become stage ones again. So this was a stage three. So if we're looking at the pattern, what you're seeing is right there. Price runs up, extreme RSI starts to go sideways. It's going to do one of two things: break down, or stage three can just become a stage one, and that's. A breakout. So let's look at Facebook. So sideways, breaks down, starting to break down. So how do we confirm this is a three? Well, so this is where that little layer of support and resistance comes. So I would draw support right around in there, that previous low right there. So you can see that where it's holding it. This is our little box we got going on. If this breaks, it's a stage four decline. You wouldn't buy it. Why? It's going down. Everything's going down, right? Where would it likely go? Uh, probably right around in here. Why? Been there before. That's the pattern. That's how stocks move. So it's going to do one of two things. It's going to rip higher or it's going to break down. If it breaks down, I just assume it's going to come back in here. And that'd be total normal movement. And when that happens, the RSI will go extreme. It'll start to go sideways and you'll get your chance to buy in again. This over here will change. It'll start to tick the other way. So let's look at... Intel, look at Intel doing the opposite, right? Stage four, this was a huge gap down. Let's take this back a little. And I've been saying wait to buy this. You don't buy on a drop, okay? Don't be a dummy. You don't wake up and it's dropped. I, I hate 
nothing makes me madder than when I get DMs from people. A stock drops one day, it's down 14%, and they're like, should we be buying it? No. No, you don't buy it day one. There's people that haven't even had a chance to sell it yet. People get home from work and see this. Not everybody's looking at their damn phone. Like the biggest traders in the world aren't sitting there looking at their phone all day. Like the people that own billions of dollars, and they're not looking at their phone all day. Like they're busy. They're doing other things, man. So when you see a big gap down like this, you don't run up in there and start buying. Why? It's a stage four decline. This is what's happening right now. It is going down. So as long as this is happening, there's no reason. It's not like it's going to turn right around and run back up. It's not going to happen. You're going to see it stop, and then it's going to start to go sideways. Now, how long is it goes? I don't know. But we can already see it turning. Look, see the MACD? Look at the MACD. The momentum is stopping, and you can look at volume. You can see it. It's happening right in front of you. Look at the volume down. Why? That's good. That means a bottom is coming in. The histogram momentum is starting to switch. You got this. I like to have this statistics underneath the bottom. Everything is going. Look, RSI is on an extreme, right? So what are we getting? And we're almost to a previous level. So we could come down a little bit more. We haven't had a single uh, positive day. Down, 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 down. Not a single positive day. So, you know, there's no reason to jump on this. Especially no reason to jump on this as a swing trade. My God. As an investment, I mean, I we still haven't even had a positive day. Like, what's the rush, right? As soon as this turns and we get one day to the black, you might could say you have a bottom and as an investor start taking some shots. But I would just slowly start picking up some shares. Start picking up some shares. But, man, don't even worry about what stock this is, man. I'm trying to teach you how to fucking trade and you're worried about what stock it is. Don't worry about what stock it is. They're all the same, dude. That's what I'm trying to teach you. That's the whole point of my book. The shit is all the same. You could just pick your own stocks. It don't matter what stock it is. So we're coming into this bottom. Price has memory. Now, what are you seeing here? Sideways, up. We're seeing a giant version of this. Sideways, down. Yeah, is it pretty on the 200 or the 20? I mean, no. Sometimes they're not all that pretty. But do you see the big pattern here? You see the big picture? When sideways, it ran up. When sideways, it's running down. You have a huge version of what this is. Right? Huge run up. Big, you might call it the horseshoe pattern. <clears throat> no, man. You don't buy only on stage one and stage three. Man, get the book, man. Come on, man. Buy the book. You buy the breakouts too, which is the stage two. Buy the breakouts. You want to buy stage ones and you want to buy breakouts, stage twos. Get the book, man. You spend more on a pair of shoes and you ain't even got the book. Come on, man. So some of you guys spend more on lunch than stock education. Let's see. So if we're back to the S&P 500, the market is crazy bullish. So all your friends that are bearish, stop talking to them. Just tell them, hey, look, I don't even like you. You're bearish, which means you're wrong, which means I don't like you anymore. So it's going up. Market's going up until it's not. Could change tomorrow. Then I would change my opinion and I would, you know. But it's up. So there's nothing to look down about. Now, here's the weird thing. You should be following, you should be following the S&P. Again, any bearish friends, I would cut them off, even if it's your mom. The, so let's look at bonds. If you were just looking at this and thought it was a stock, it's in an uptrend, right? And so if I came to this chart, and I didn't even know, if I came to this chart, here's what I would do. I would just, first thing I always do, this is what I do on any chart. You sh are we above the green line or below it? And I start looking at the plots where we cross it. And what am I doing here? I'm asking myself, does it respect the 20? If it respects the 20 most of the time and runs up, 
after it breaks above it, now we got something here. If it runs down when it's below it, we got something. If it runs up when it's above it, we got something. So I'm okay, this trade, not all stocks are tradable. Not all stocks, you know, charts are gonna help you. Some just look terrible. So don't waste your time on them. This is bonds, the TLT. If you're gonna trade for life, if you're gonna be a serious investor, if you're gonna do this for any length of time, you've got to understand the concept of bonds. Institutional money trades bonds. Bonds control interest rates. Interest rates move REITs around, they move dividend stocks around. You can have a stock like AT&T get blasted because of what happens in the bond market and it has nothing to do with AT&T. So, and you're gonna see this as the Fed speaks. The more you understand bonds, the more you're gonna understand why when the Federal Reserve talks, it's such a big deal. So, same thing in this. Remember, I, I just had, it's like a religion to me. So as I look at things, okay, price is above the 20, where's it likely to go? Previous high, you might could have said this one, probably would have come right around in here. I come down a little bit off that to give it a little bit of room. That's my target, and it almost always falls on a 70 RSI. You can see we're hitting it. So if you're long this right now, should be taking profits, right? <coughs> First target's hit, and we were. I used the triple leveraged TMF. This is in my newsletter. This is bonds. Now, here's the weird thing. This usually goes up when the market's going down. And the market's been going up, and it's been going up, and gold's been going up, and oil's been going up. That's weird. Very, very weird. So, yeah. Does the stock respect the 20? Now, if you look at a stock and it plays with the 20, it plays with it. Above it, below it, above it, below it. You have to take that into account. So uh, a stock I like to trade is Twitter. Now I'm gonna use the same strategy. Everything is the same. What stage am I in? Some stages aren't gonna be as clear, okay? They're not gonna be as pretty. They're not gonna show up as well. But one thing you'll notice about Twitter, it I call it sloppy. It trades sloppy. You see these little constant little drops? It loves to play with that 20 and so you're just going to have to give it room. So what do I do when a stock is sloppy like that? I like, I immediately draw a line and see if there's any support. And if there is, I'm not overly concerned. I'm going to give it a minute. And I always wait to the close. Don't make these decisions at 9 a.m., 8 a.m., 9 you know, because the market just opened. You can have it open down, immediately reverse, like we saw here, comes back up. This wasn't a worry, right? So... Same over here. I would have drew a line. Even though we were breaking the 20 here, I'm not really worried until support breaks. Now I'm worried, right? So I'd probably be out or downsizing if I was trading. Just because something goes into a downtrend, even as a trade, I don't necessarily sell it. And this confuses people. You say, well, why wouldn't you sell it if you're trading? Because I'm not day trading. Meaning I'm not, I don't have a gigantic position in this one stock. I'm trading 40 stocks. What I'm really trading is what do I believe the company is actually worth? I may downsize. There's nothing wrong with, and I do this quite a bit. You'll see. Let's say I'm in Twitter. Let's say, and this is for a hypothetical example. Let's say I thought the company was worth $42. And we go into a stage four decline. There's support. It's now broke. If we're looking at the pattern, we're selling off, price closed below the 20. We are now in a stage four decline. That is the opposite of going up. So in this, how you know, do I want to write it down? Maybe. Maybe I do. Maybe I just put a hard stop for half of my shares. Maybe it's a stock like DraftKings that I think is going north to $45, $50. I may not be able to get back in when it rips higher. Maybe it pulls a Facebook and you know gaps up eight percent what do you do now you know this was kind of a stage but was this a stage four decline it's below the 20 nope why facebook is a perfect illustration of this what do you see when you look at this so watch sideways up sideways now look at facebook it is a giant you know you just see it, it's giant Sideways, up, 
sideways. See how big that was? It's like huge. So, and look, where was the top RSI? This came in and it was basically the top, maybe a little bit more room and that was basically the done. It was done, you know? Now I'm playing a little loosey goosey with that, that line there. Probably adjust it a little. Eh, maybe not. You can see where it tries to break out, tries to break out. When you get into this, and this is a little nuance, it's going to take time for you to develop, okay? Take time with this to develop. Once it starts to go into this stage three, doesn't mean it has to go into a stage four, right? All of a sudden, stage three can become a stage one. What does that look like? Price moves up. So now, stay, now Facebook is in a stage two breakout. It's in stage two breakout. You know, where so we can previous support becomes resistance. This is now the new resistance. Look where the low was. I mean, right at the top, right? So this is a breakout. I mean, it's a classic. Look, fives now the moving now these moving averages and everything are back to being your friend. When you're in the stage three, look how flat the two the 20 went. It was no longer your friend. So when you're in these stage ones and stage threes, the moving averages don't matter. This is where you get whipsawed above it, below it, above it, below it, above it, below it, above it, below it, above it, below it. You're getting whipsawed. Um, this here, and this is just a side note, this was a stage four decline. You can see where it broke support. So I would have drawn a line right there, and then it broke it. It broke it, man. So I would have said, wow, this is stage four decline, and it came right to almost previous low. When it turned around and got right back in the box, you'll hear me talk about this. That is crazy bullish. That was your sign that Facebook's back in play. And then look what's happened since. Um, those are nuances. All of that that I just said is going to take you a minute. Understanding the box, that's going to mean you need to understand a stage three. What does it look like? What is a stage one? This is distribution, meaning shares are being unloaded. Stage one is accumulation. Shares are being accumulated. And then clear distinction of what a two and a four is. But that support needs to be broken. When it came right back into the box, super bullish, super bullish. We had a good example of that in Delta a while back where I need to, I've been working on a book now called The Perfect Trade. But right there, you see how it broke this two-month support? See that? That was crazy. That was a stage. This is a new stage four to climb. But look what happens. It turns right around and then it broke right back into the box. That's crazy bearish or bullish. What'll happen though, what'll happen is you will have then taken your money, ate this loss, you move on to a different stock, and then this thing rips higher. This is why I like to stay with the same stocks, man. So when it came back in, I'm looking to get back in. And if I think the stock is worth more money, even on this breakdown here, I wouldn't have sold all. I would have sold half. And then I'll ride down half. But I'm not day trading, you know. And so that, that brings in fundamental analysis. What is the fundamental value of the stock? Ultimately, that's the edge. The edge is this pattern and catching this pattern down here when stocks are worth up here. I mean, that's what makes it work, right? You can trade purely technical, but in my experience, that's, uh, it, you know, I just, I don't know. I like trading value. So let's look at AT&T. AT&T really hasn't done shit in months. This is one where the moving averages are no longer helping you. Like, this is just a giant sideways movement, man. You know, we had a little run. I mean, I don't know. This box is getting tighter and tighter, which is what you want to see. They call that a cold spring. You see it tightening up. You kind of see it tightening up. See it tightening up. Easy target as a trader. I don't, you know, at and is tough to trade. It moves at the, you know, it's like watching paint dry. <clears throat> we don't need to go overseas, man. You need to pay the fuck attention and learn the pattern. That's what you need to do. And if you know the pattern, you don't even need me to go overseas. Then you'll know how to do it. I'm trying to teach you to fish. You worried about sea. Why are you being selfish, man? 
Everybody always selfish. Let's see. Let's look at gold. So, what do you see on gold, man? Should you buy this? A lot of people want to buy gold. That's because they don't know what I know. Look at that. That's an 82 RSI. 82 RSI. What do you think that means? This thing is topped out. 82 RSI. Everybody wants to buy gold. Now, does that mean it can't go higher? Of course not. It can just keep going. Who, who knows, right? But look over here. The same thing on the top is the same thing on the bottom. Now, it could be a runaway, like my man said. That's always a possibility. And it just goes without me, right? Because I got a religion. And if you have a religion and you actually follow your religion, sometimes you don't get to do things that are fun. Like, that's how religions work. So, unless you don't follow your religion, then I don't know the point in having a religion. So, we see the momentum changing. So, if this was to the downside, this was to the downside, and it was going this way, I would be what? Telling you, hey, stage one, you might be looking at buying. So, this is the opposite of what we're seeing in Intel, right? Same thing apply. You just invert the rules. Uh, invert the rules. So, momentum is slowing. We have an anchor point, so this will probably top out for a minute. But, you know, topped out over here, went sideways for a while, and then we broke out again. So if gold is going to go to, say, 5,000, cool. You just follow this pattern, you know. Same thing. Um, but I wouldn't be buying here. I'd let this thing establish, you know, at least establish that it's, you know. And then maybe you can get a sell-off. Maybe not. Maybe it just goes sideways. If it breaks out again, you want to play the gold game, that's when I would do it. But you got to work this off. This has got to come down. This has got to come down. And you see what that's what this did. It can't. It brought it down. You need to bring that RSI down, man. So if you have a strategy or a core belief or, or things, then you're going to miss things, right? You're not going to catch a penny stock that goes from a dollar to $100 if you don't follow penny stocks. So don't be a guy that's like, hey, I'm really into dividend stocks. Okay, cool. There's going to be times when that's out of favor or they're just not doing anything. And so what you would do then is just, just wait. Like you don't have to make something happen. You can't make stocks go up. So if you don't trade gold and then all of a sudden gold's in the news and gold's going straight up, don't look at gold. Like, you missed it. It's not your thing. If you were supposed to be in gold, you'd have been following it back here. Now, I follow gold in the newsletter. Why? Because it's one of the things people trade. So if you look, where's it at? Right here, market status. So I try to update this. I don't do it every day, every couple days. S&P 500, stage two uptrend. Gold, stage two breakout. It's been a breakout for a long time. Page 23, I, I have the charts. Brent crude, staged, it was stage two, I have to go, I don't know if, I haven't updated this one yet. So, but inside of each of these, I, you know, so inside the S&P, these are the stocks I'm trading. Inside of gold, I got a couple gold stocks I trade. Inside of oil, I'm trading XLO, or XLE, Exxon, Conoco, Chevron, and Fang. So they're going to, since I trade these stocks, I need to keep an eye on, on oil. I don't want to trade oil, I want to trade the, the stocks. Um, and then bonds. So I'm watching the four horsemen of the financial apocalypse. I'm watching them. Um, and then like, so these are things that I'm trading. If you go back, I think it's page 13. Is it 13? Uh, no. These are usually uh, concept trades that I'm working on. So right now, we've been trading electrical companies. Electrical companies got really cheap. Electrical companies move very slow. So we've been trading them. If you're in the Money Flow Trading Society, we've been using the UTSL. This is a triple leverage fund. Here's our breakout. We're moving up. Where's our target? Previous high. So we're looking for $26. So this has just been slowly working. 
think we're up like 20% in this one. So that's a concept trade. You'll see I always have one. I had airlines. I'm out of the airlines. I had, you know, uh, banks is one we're doing now, regional banks in the back. So we're trading the regional banks. How are we trading the regional banks? The AIT is a regional bank ETF. So my man asked about Citi. Citi's going to look just like this chart here, okay? It's going to look just like it. Well, almost just like it. Citi's a lot more sideways. So I'm long regional banks. Now, the AIT is a regular. I'm using a triple leverage fund since it's a trade. I want to make the most money possible. And our target is $90. So we're trying to catch a $40 move on this $50 stock. So if you look at JP Morgan, right? JP Morgan, same pattern. Target, all these targets are to the left, previous high, right? So all these banks are setting up. If you go to the newsletter, and I think it's in the back. Go to, yeah, page 31. Over here, high risk, high reward. These are some of my more speculative things that I'm doing. I put the banks on that, on that trade. This is the regular ETF. I'm trading the triple leverage, so you get three times. Remember, it can go against you three times. And I'm doing regional banks and not the big banks, not Citi, JP Morgan, which I'm doing the, uh, 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 the regionals. These are two regional banks that I like if you just wanted to trade the banks. So if we look at, let's look at H-Ban. So this will help you as you look at, let's, so the, the, A, the ETF is the AIT. This is the U, iShares US Regional Bank, right? It's above the 20. So you see what I'm trading, right? Stage four decline, stop declining, breaking out. Where's my target? Previous high, which happens to be below the 200, which makes me excited. But look, look, look at H band. Same pattern. This is just a, one of the regional banks. If you rather trade a stock, that I'd rather trade in there. So it's good idea to like sometimes formulate ideas. So if you want to trade oil stocks, you know why? What's going to move it? Uh, you could trade the XLE. You don't have to pick an individual stock. Uh, so I think this is one of the few values left in the stock market are banks and regional banks because it's definitely not Apple. It's definitely not Pinterest, which is one of the stocks we've been in. Pinterest was up 36% on Friday. Um, this is one that also likes to flirt with the 20 a lot. Um, my target was $26. We hit it, um, and then I'd just been holding it. Um, and then we got a bonus. So I'm guessing, so what do I do now? Because I had sold some over here at $26. That was my fair value target. Um, now it's ripped higher, so what do we do? I'm going to wait and see. Uh, it's obviously overbought right now. I sold a little bit, and we'll wait and see. They may raise the price target. They've added a shit ton of their business model has changed. A lot more subscribers, possibly sell more ads. The target may go higher, and now we have a brand new stage two breakout. And you know, so that's how you know you can, and it can go the opposite on you. They can break down. I mean, look how many shares. 111 million. Woo. Yeah. So I'm started to watch Raytheon myself for a buy and hold position. But it's a stage four decline, man. Um, where would I expect this to go? Previous low, probably right around in here. That's where I'm expecting it to go. Momentum still to the downside. 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 We're not even on an extreme yet. So, I mean, there's no reason to buy much here. It's coming down to probably this 52 range. So you see, if, if this was breaking out, I would do the opposite. I would assume it's coming up here. Why? Price has memory, you know? Make sense? So you don't, it, it, it applies the same to all stocks. Like everything is the same. I'm going to look at every stock exactly the same. It's a religion. Keeps it super simple, man. A lot of things in my mind I ain't got to worry about. Everybody else worries about it. I ain't worried about it. I don't read bearish stories. I don't do any of that. If it's above the 20, it's going up, man. Like, what's the conversation? So here's one in the Money Flow Trading Society. We got long into the close. We've been stalking this one. This is a stock that we had made 100% on. 
not that long ago. So remember, sideways? So what you're looking for on a stage one is what? Extreme RSI or, you know, some stocks won't give you extreme, but we're looking for this low. We want this on the low end and we want to see some sideways movement. That's pretty damn sideways. And then we see the breakout, right? There was the breakout. Ran up. What was the target? Previous high. So right around in there. I usually come down a little bit. It was close enough. It's hitting that our side close enough. Bam. Sell some. And then we just been drifting sideways for a while. Um, and then we started this stage four decline. If until it breaks support, I'm not overly worried. Which we did in here. Um, a lot of people kept asking me, why are we not selling this? Because I didn't sell it. Why am I not selling? Why am I not selling? Because I believe the company is worth $9 based on research, fundamental analysis. So if you're going to, and I'm not day trading, right? So this is just one of 40 trades. It's not that big a deal, dude. So it goes down 50 cents. So, but if you were gonna sell in there, see, that's just not a breakdown. It's just, it's just flirting with this zone in here. It's just flirting with it. You could just sell half, you know? If you're breaking support and you're concerned, sell half. You can always sell half the next day and half the next day, right? But look, we broke up. Remember what I told you? If you break back into the box, super bullish. It's what Facebook did before its big move. What did it do? Broke support. Let's draw support. This is crucial. I'm dropping a dime on you right here. It broke support, super bearish, came right back into the box, and then now look where we are. I showed you on Delta is a good example. Same thing, came right back into the box, and then we ran up 30%. BXRX is doing the same thing. Slowly broke a little support, barely, barely, barely. I mean, it's just been dripping down. And now we've ripped right back up into the box and we closed above the 20, double whammy. We're back above or right at support. I would say above it. We're right at it, right at it. See, it just it's almost like a guy with a running back and he just lays the ball right over it. And everything is turning up. Look at this. So we were on this and uh, immediately toward the close started buying shares. Target. My ultimate target's $9. If you're really tight trading, you know, you're probably going to want to sell some up in here. Beautiful. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. Beautiful. ADX is coming together. It's not quite close. ADX will, will lag. Um, I really use the ADX back when I was... Uh, super short trading. I just kind of keep it on there. It's like an old friend. Most of these things are going to confirm. You know, at the end of the day, all I really need is support resistance and the 20-day the and the price. I mean, I just keep a lot of these on here just because I've had them for so long. I just feel comfortable with them. But honestly, I'm most of the time just looking at where's RSI, where's support and resistance, and where's price. All these are going to line up. I do like to watch the histogram for it to turn. And we were stalking that. I was literally watching every day on BXRX, watching every day. I'm watching this histogram to start to turn the other direction, man. That tells me this downside momentum is slowing. Same to the upside. So on GLD, same thing to the upside. You know, we're starting to see divergence. MACD histograms going the other way. Um, What's another one? Yeah, Discover. Discover's one. These are a lot of trades. A lot of these trades are kind of in limbo. Uh, they started to break, and then they stopped. And Discover's kind of following the same pattern as the regional banks, which a lot of stocks are, to be honest. Uh, true value on this is I think they've raised it up quite a bit. I think I read it was 80-something. That seems a little... A little heavy and you know first target right around in there dude this one is such 
This one is such a, uh, this is such a no brainer that, I mean, these are my favorite setups. It's favorite setups where price is below the 200. It's a dividend stock and we're setting up where it ran up, pulls back, goes into this lazy stage four and then puts in this bottom here. And then, I mean, these are just, these are, these are, these are no brainers, man. These are no brainers. I think if I ran an institutional, let's see. Let's see. Fangs hanging in there. This is interesting. Fang didn't sell off. Fang didn't sell off, but a lot of oil stocks did. And we've got this solid support here on Fang. Got this solid support on Fang. Look at this. See this floor? And we got this target. I've had a lot of good results trading this stock. It's interesting though, because Exxon sold off, but it came back into the box, man. Look at this is, remember I've talked to, you hear me? I mean, I was just talking about it. This is crazy bullish. We're back into the box. The box being right in here. We're back into the box. <laughs> Back into the box. Chevron's looking weaker. But look, look into the close. It came back into the box. I mean, I don't, man, that's crazy bullish. This is why I like to wait, you know, if you, because it was looking ugly in the day. It had broke support going straight down and then right into the close we see all these stocks come rallying back now some people are going to say um some people are going to say you know this is window dressing they're wrapping up for the end of the month if you own a mutual fund you want to look like you own you know one of the little games mutual funds will do i don't know people still buy into this shit but they didn't own apple they go buy Apple. They sell off some of their losers. So it looks like they had a winning fund. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know why anybody would go and look. I don't, I don't know why that would work anymore, but they claim it. They still do it. Um, yeah, I mean, Oxy's all right. I'd rather own Fang, bro. I'd rather own Fang. Oxy's not bad. There's some big players in Oxy. Oh, spec play we're in. We've been in this one for a minute. It's not really, this is a big, they're not big, but they're a solid company. Um, EVRI, they do uh, paperless casino transactions, among other things. Go look this company up, EVRI. Um, I think they're fixing to report earnings, though, so we'll see what happens. Uh, someone makes it? Yeah, yeah, DKNG, I haven't sold anything. I'm not selling any on this, man. And just, again, here's an example. It closed below the 20, but it, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because it's held the support of this of this little move here. So until we truly break and start to go down, I'm not overly concerned. Um, you know, and even here, for me, if this breaks, I'm only going to sell. And it looks to be, you know, I mean, there's a lot of negative on here. Don't misunderstand me. I have a much higher target on the stock. So if this breaks, I'm just going to sell half. I'll sell half because I highly doubt it breaks here. It'll probably get back on. Sports are opening up. There's a lot of fundamentals for this. 
So, and to be honest, I may not sell any. I just think we're going higher. It's not coming back here. It's not pre-corona. We're not coming back here. It's not happening. I mean, I shouldn't say it's not happening. I don't think it's happening. I would be a, looking to be a buyer. I want to own a lot more of this if I can. I just think DraftKings is going higher, man. I think people are addicted to gambling. I think they've figured it out. And I think sports are going to open back up. I think the price is going higher. Like, that's just research. Uber's another one. I do not sell Uber into stage four declines. So you never have to ask me, did you sell your Uber? No. I will write it down. I rode this one over here down. I rode it down. And then I started buying. And then I bought. You know, and then I've been buying. Why? Because I think it's going much higher and I want to make a lot of money. So I'm not concerned with a one or two dollar drop. You know, if you are, you know, use your levels. Use your levels. Um, but to me, this hasn't really dropped enough. What, you know, we're, on, we're, we're trading in a little box here now. This has kind of got out of whack a little because it was breaking out. So we've kind of gotten a little out of whack. I really wouldn't be worried as long as that 28 level holds, man. You know, I'm trading a penny stock that I don't quite understand. I got to use hard stops. I'm trading Uber. Uber's not going to, I mean, you know, unless something fundamentally changes about this company, I'm not really that worried. If it comes down, I'm going to be looking at nibbling up some. But again, I'm position trading, meaning I believe the company's worth a lot higher price. If you don't have a belief in that, then yeah, you need to play stops and get out, man. Make sense? So combine research, your knowledge, stock selection inside of this idea of, of, of price movement, which is what you know, you'll see me do. Like So inside of this idea of price moving through the four stages – I'm also going to research stocks. I'm going to look at earnings. Like I'm going to try to see what is a fair value of this company. If it's trading overvalued, I'm going to need some stops because it would make total sense that this thing sell way off. And why would I want to try to flip a condo that's overpriced? Like it doesn't make sense to me. Doesn't mean I don't want to own it though. Like right now, if you look on my story, that house I was at yesterday, that house is worth 200000 I can only rent it for 1200 It's worth way more than I'm renting it for. Would I buy that house? Hell no. <laughs> but I'd sell it and buy two more. Because why? I'm looking for stage one houses, not stage three houses. That's a stage three house. Does it mean the house can't go higher? Nope, it can go higher. That's why I'm still owning it. It's a, it can just keep going up. That neighborhood has priced ridiculous and it just keeps going higher and higher. So I just keep holding on to it. But nobody in my town can afford that rent. Not as a rental. So... You know, again, you can own a stock that you wouldn't buy here. I wouldn't buy Facebook on this breakout. I'd wait and see what it does over the next few days. Hope that makes sense. Um, hey, I'll come back. We'll look at just look at some of your stories. Uh, stories. We'll look at some of your house. Oh, Jesus, some of your stocks. Uh, and I'll stop rambling about price movement. Um, and I know I poke fun at some people with the stocks you give me. I'm just trying to teach there and then, and we'll come back now and, and we'll look at some of your stocks. We'll start with YouTube. Man, got rid of the weirdos from Instagram. Let's see. What are you guys looking at? Yeah, Roku earnings. Um, yeah, yeah, man. Oh, shit. Grant Cardone's live right now. Uh, oh, shit. He's going to steal all my followers. Man, I'd like to see Grant Cardone dirty one time. I like Grant, but I'd just like to see him all dirty. Uh, yeah, I'm in Roku. I'm down to a core. So someone on YouTube asked about Roku. And I'm going to show you why I'm down on a core. I bought down in here on the breakout, ran it up. Roku is a perfect example of this anchor. I call it the anchor. I'm sure I'm making that up. I don't think anybody else calls it that. That's the anchors where the RSI hits that extreme and then goes sideways. We see it again here, and then it went sideways. I'm long. If we break out above this, I'd be cool to add to, uh, to Roku. I'm down to a core position. What do I mean core? Meaning if it sells off, I'm just going to ride it down. I anticipate it coming into maybe here. 
I mean, maybe that's a little little low, but I like the stock of Roku. I think it's going to maybe 170. No, bro, we're out of it. Uh, yeah. Let's see. My man is stressing about this. Yes, I'm out, bro. Um, I was hoping on uh, the bankruptcy news would be different and we would get a different play on this. We're not. I mean, you could stay in it, keep a stop at the low of today, and then, uh, you know, play it from there. Um, just didn't do what I was hoping it would do. It's a spec play. Anytime you're playing these dollar, two dollar, most of them, not all of them, there are billion dollar companies that trade for a dollar, but most of them, you know, it, you know, spec for a reason, man. Um, yeah, so Nokia, I'm in Nokia. That one's just run up. It's a brand new breakout too, man. I had a $5 fair value target on this for a long time. And the Trump administration has taken a liking to this stock with the anti-Chinese. This could go a lot higher. I'm in this. I wish I had more. If we stabilize here, I might put some more on. Um, I like Ro I like Nokia, man. Cody's been a disappointment, but I'm kind of starting to like it again. I'm in it. You see this slow drift? That's what BXRX was doing. We broke support. But it's just meandering. Keep an eye. Like, it's going so slow, the indicators aren't even helping you, man. I I don't know. I wouldn't be buying a lot here, but I would definitely keep an eye on it. I'm in a, I'm in a little bit of a position. I'm not doing anything. I'm just watching this shit, man. All you can do is watch it. Let's see. ATBI. I mean, that's just a slow grind higher, bro. I mean, this actually is kind of a new breakout. There's your support or resistance. Your MACD's crossing again. You got solid volume. You might could buy that, man. I don't know anything about the company, but... The dollar? UUP? We got somebody here wanting to trade the dollar? Come on, man. Don't trade the dollar. It moves too slow. It's just pennies. The only way to make money on these kind of the dollar and stuff like that is to trade it in Forex. And, well, the dollar's been in a solid downtrend. So people ask, why is gold going up? Gold's going up because the dollar's going down. So the UUP is the dollar index bullish fund. So when you see the dollar go down, you're going to see stocks go up. Why? Because if the U.S. dollar's cheap, you can buy a lot of American stocks. Make sense? Very un, very unusual play here. They're printing dollars, so of course it's going down. All you bastards getting six hundred dollar bonuses not to work. That's why the dollar's going down. Blame it on the unemployed. I don't play forex, nah. I stay too damn busy doing the. Intel's not quite there yet. You could start buying it as a, you know, you might start nibbling as an investor. As a swing trader, it's just not there yet, man. Uh, I wish your dad was like, yeah, I wish your dad was alive too. That's a nice thing to say, though. I appreciate that. APA, man, this is one I was in. I got out. I'm mad at myself. It's right there, though. Man, this move back here was, this was, oh my gosh. And I, I got in it and I got out up here like a dumbass. Um, okay, so th let's look at the airline trade. These all roll together. What's up, Rick? Uh-oh, we got a celebrity. We got a celebrity. My man Rick was on, uh, if you guys haven't listened yet. Bro, I thought we just talked about ASNA. Uh, if you haven't listened yet, go listen to the Bigger Pockets. Uh, Rick from uh, Real Estate Old School is on there, interviewed. Pretty cool. Oh, I'm jealous. It's actually kind of hard to get on there. You were trying to, you were spending a minute trying to get on there, weren't you, Rick? It took a while. Um. Anyway, airline trades, Delta, you know, same pattern. I'm trading the airlines through a company called Air. 
uh, same pattern. Looks like it's coming back into the box. That's super bullish. We've got UAL. Like all of these are basically the same. Boeing. Just pick your favorite stock in the airlines. Boeing looks the weakest though, man. Boeing is in a stage four decline. And I know a lot of people shorting Boeing right now, institutional traders that are shorting this. I got little birdies that send me messages sometimes. And you notice I'm not in Boeing. There's a lot of institutional shorts in this, which tells me they know something I don't know. Um, and they're shorting into a bull market, which I think is dumb, but they're doing it. Downside target right here. Um, ET, I've been buying. Yeah, if you guys don't follow Rick, go follow him. Um, let's see. Uh, what is one? Hold on. Let's check YouTube here. I'm writing a ticker down. Hold on just a second. Wanted to come back to that one. So I'm not a big fan of Boeing. Um, I like the company. I just don't understand. There's something going on with Boeing on a government level that we don't know about, I think. We'll, we shall find out. So restaurant trades. Someone mentioned Ruth. Whenever I think of a stock, I think of all the stocks in that sector. Ruth Chris Steakhouse. So we got that. It's selling off. That's a big sell-off. I'm guessing 13% down. I don't know why. I mean, that's the start of a stage four decline. Look at Denny's. I like to eat at Denny's. It's holding in there. Denny's is one that I'm in uh, a little bit, and I'm looking to add to this. I like Denny's trade, but I'm also in McDonald's and Starbucks, which are also restaurant trades. So there's cake. Where's cake? So all these tend to move together, man. I don't know why Ruth is so weak, though. I'm guessing they missed earnings. My man said he's got BA puts. Good move, bro. Good move. Is DP... I don't know if it's going to hit it. That's my target, man. No, I'm, I'm out of ASNA. Thought we covered that. Let's see. QSR, QSR. This one's actually held up pretty good, but I mean, none of these restaurant, this was a, man, this, this thing, got, man, boy, we could have got this. So uh, this is a hundred percent return since the lows of, of, uh, of, uh, but if you're still in it, bro, just hold it, put a stop under yesterday's low. It could still go up. I just didn't like. I was thinking they were going to try something different than they're trying. QSR has been amazing, man. I mean, now it's just been in a giant consolidation right now, but it's been amazing. I'm long ET. No, I'm not saving this one. I saved the first one. ET was, ET's getting ready to run. Just know what this is. This is an MLP. This is not a regular stock. This is a dividend stock. Um, it's going to move slow as molasses. I wouldn't trade this. If you're trying to trade, you're just going to tie up money. But as an investor, you could pick up a whole bunch, collect some dividends, and probably sell some up here at $9 and take some off the table. You see what I'm saying there? So as an investor, I've been buying this every day. Every day I've been putting money into ET. Every day, every day, every day, just buying, 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 buying. And I'm have more shares than I want to have, and I'm going to sell some of those up here at this $9 range. Oh, oh, here we go. Now we're getting some weird ones. S-P-A-Q. Ugh. I ain't shit about that I like, bro. Now, I don't even know what you're doing there, man. What is it about this you like? It shoots way up and then comes way down. I'm not a big fan of here's what I don't like if shit runs up real big and then you start following it it's kind of like I don't know man 
it's kind of like someone wins the lottery at a gas station and you start buying your tickets there. Like, if you follow stocks, you don't have to chase this kind of shit. Like, this is just shit. That's all I see. This is terrible. Look at this. All this. This is, this is a pump and dump. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And then a bunch of newsletters put it out, run it up. Now it pulls back. I mean, I don't know that for a fact, but that's what it looks like. Unless you know something about the company I don't know. I, I, when I see that, I don't like it. That's not a real company. Like a real company is flowing. It's moving around. Um, I don't like it, man. I, what have we got? ITRM. It's another one of these low price ones. Slow death to hell. ITRM hasn't broke out or it's trading below the 20. It's not doing anything. There's nothing about this I like unless you have some reason to believe it's going higher, like you've researched it. I mean, you do got a gap over here. It's below the, I don't know. Everything's pointing down, man. There's nothing about it I like. Versus, let's see, where's 3M? 3M's in a downtrend, right? Yeah. I mean, there's nothing exciting about 3M. It's floating around. It's 20, it's near support. I bought a bunch back here. I, you know, it's not on sale. Not, I don't know a catalyst for it to go any higher. I think true value is right around 156. EVR, I've been buying. EVR, I've been buying. Oh, ESPR. Let's look at some more. Esperia. Now, this is one I cut. If you remember, I cut this one in half back over here. Stage four decline. We broke support. I mean, this is in a stage four decline. It's on a 30 RSI. I don't know, man. This is in a downtrend, dude. I would give this a little time. I'd give it a little time. You know, because this is in the same business as CRSP, which is one that I'm in too, and that one's gone straight up. So I like that ESPR, but for some reason people are selling it, man. Um, you know, and I'm in this one, but technically you could say that's the start of a stage four decline, but we're holding that support. So I'm kind of just holding my shares there. Cody looks terrible, but we're waiting. Yeah. VSTM is a spec play that I'm in. I don't own a lot, but I own a little bit. It ain't doing much. I have a hard stop on this one and like the one it's right or whatever the low of this day is here. What is that? No, what is it? Yeah, I think it's about 130. I got a hard stop on this. PayPal straight up. Tesla, who cares? Uh, let's see. Halliburton. Shop. Tesla's about to sell off, man, it looks like. Kind of sick of Tesla, to be honest. Let's see. Roku. I'm in Roku. Stage three, just holding. They report earnings. It's not going to do anything until earnings, and then it's going to blast up or blast down. Um, NIO. But I'm in it, Roku. So NIO has the same chart as Tesla. See it? Same chart. Stage, it's starting a stage four decline, but you know, this is your support level. So I wouldn't buy this. If you're in it, I wouldn't sell it, but I'm not a buyer here. I wait and see if this level holds. See if this support level holds right in here. That's a big box, though. That's a tradable box, too, man. If you could get it down a little lower and this level holds. With your target being 17, I'd stay with this. If you're in it, I wouldn't get out. But if you're not in it, I'd wait and see. Yeah, Apple diluting their stock. Yep. Yeah. Verizon, I don't ever trade it. I just own shares. It's just boring. Um, I mean, it's in an uptrend. I wouldn't be a buyer here. Look at this overhead resistance. I mean, if we break through, maybe, yeah, you buy it. But look at that top, dude. Fuck. That is solid. Like every time it's hit this price, it stops. 
So if we break that, you know, maybe you get on it. And what I would do on that is then I'd go to a weekly chart and say, okay, where's our upside target here? You know, maybe $60. It's just not enough room. Um, I would be buying AT&T if you're buying it for an investment, which I assume that's why you're messing with. Uh... Yeah, I was teasing people about Apple. I don't know if people get it. Stock split. I don't know. I don't understand why that would make anybody excited. You're getting the same value. They're just giving you quarters for your dollars. I mean, I don't understand why that makes anybody happy. Uh, I get it. It's cheaper. I like this, Simon. Well, okay, so the Simon Property Group is... We're in a... I'm in a trade called DRN. DRN is the three times leverage real estate bull fund. It is the same thing you see in Simon Property Group is in this trade. So I'm long that indirectly through the DRN, which is a triple leverage fund. So I like that whole real estate trade right now. Banks, real estate, they, they're the only value left in the market. I mean, everything else is run up. So I think at some point, hedge fund, well, Visa is coming down a little bit. But look, this is just a giant stage three. So Visa is in a giant stage three. I don't know when their earnings are. Long as you're above this, you're good. I mean, it looks like it's breaking down. I would have, if you're trading this, I'd have a hard stop under here. Yeah, triple leverage fund. Yeah, they're not real. They're not real stocks. It's like, uh, you've. I'm sure people have heard the terms derivatives. It's a derivative. It's a... It's not the actual underlying fund. It's a um, leverage, and they get there's a lot of ways they can get the leverage. Some of them do it through options. Some of them just simply buy three times of the amount of the stock and put it into that fund. So whenever, like the IAT moves, you know, see it's down 0.35 percent. Well, the triple leverage is the DPST, and look, it's down two. 0.62%. It's down three times. It's actually down more than three times. You can do the same in gold. So the gold is the GLD. You see it was up 1% today. The triple leverage is the UGLD. And it's up... Uh, oh, they canceled some of these, didn't they? That's right. They canceled some of these leverage funds. Some of the leverage funds are being canceled. Um they're, they're highly speculative. I wouldn't mess with them unless you know what you're doing because, bro, you can get ass smacked in them when they start going down. So, like, I already had people start crying the moment DPSD. This thing will move 10 15% in a single day. So it can run from 50 to 90 if it gets going, but it can go from 50 to 20 just as easy. So, you know, make sure you know what you're doing and have some stops. I like to do what I like to do with them. Is, is let's say I normally would buy 100 shares. I'll buy a hell of a lot less of a triple fund. That allows me to tie up less money and then take the other money and go and do other things, right? So I wouldn't take the same size position in a triple fund as I would a stock. That's just, that's not a good idea. So let's see, TWLO. Yeah, it's just straight up. Ain't nothing about that. I'd be taking profits. All right, Mel, where's your picks? How come you haven't given us oh, ESPR and primary by institution, smart money trims right before earnings? Ooh, dropping bombs on us. Intel is part of my buy and hold portfolio. So I like it, and I'd be ready to start buying. You know, it's not a big mover. It's not quite there yet. Wait for it to have a day where it stops dropping. But I like Intel. I like it. Uh, HRTX. Did it fill the bond? No, it didn't quite fill. Still haven't filled this gap. We're close. I like this one. HRTX. Shopify. Do we really need to talk about Shopify? Now we're just bragging. And you didn't give the ticker. No gold star for you. Uh, let's see. Lumber liquidators. 
The people that like to give you cancer. Let's see. I don't. I can't even believe this company's still in business. But look at this. No, you won't buy this, man. You'd be selling this. This is a runaway, Jesus. I wouldn't buy this up here. I wouldn't have bought it here either, though, or here. This is a runaway. Runaway's nice if you're in it. Same Shopify. But I wouldn't buy this here, dude. Look at this. What are you going to do? You're coming late to the party. Uh, no, I can't buy it. It's against my religion. It is against my religion. I mean, how many people did this company kill? I can't even trade their stock, dude. Like, they make me sick. This, as a real estate investor, I was putting in their shitty product that was filled with cancer killing people. And somehow the CEO didn't go to prison. Like, they were literally making their product in China with shit that would kill people. And they knew it was going on. And they're not dead or in jail. I don't understand it. So, no, I wouldn't trade their product. Because there are horrible human beings who tried to kill people. Literally tried to kill them. Like literally. They literally produced a product that they knew had cancer cars, cars in it that would kill people. And nobody seems to care. Nobody went to jail. So no, I wouldn't trade that stock. That's just my personal opinion. Something about people trying to kill me I don't like. Since I'm the guy that puts the stuff in. Uh, um, but it's a beautiful stock chart anyway um, SMH oh yeah it's just slow climb up man slow climb up um, that's my rant on lumber liquidators let's see Wayfair. Yeah, man. Come on, man. What are we doing looking at these stocks? There ain't nothing here to buy, man. There ain't nothing to buy on that. That's just straight up, man. I don't know if you should sell it. G S H D. Uh oh. Mel's getting political on me. Um. Mel, don't bring, bring your socialist liberal thoughts in here. Goosehead insurance. Wow. If you're in this, I would just hold it, man. Hopefully you're taking some profits. The difference is, Mel, with MO, people choose to buy those. With lumber liquidators, they were hiding the fact that they had cancer carcinics in it. That's the difference. That is the difference. They didn't have on the box, this flooring may kill you. Um, they didn't give us that option. This is a, yeah, I would stay with this, man. GSHD, I don't know why it's breaking out. <laughs> so, Mel's against cigarette stocks and four pot stocks. That makes a lot of sense. I had a guy the other day, he was against cigarette stocks, but he's buying pot stocks. And I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, they make Duchess and a hell of a lot of people smoke weed, right? <laughs> uh, no, I won't buy Bank of America for the same reason. There's just some companies that I personally despise. Uh, Google is one of them. You notice I never trade Google. Because I actually despise them as human beings and hope they all die. Uh, Lumbo Liquidators, Bank of America, they could all die. That's fine. Uh, there's just some companies that I just despise them. I just hate their, their, their entire existence. Um, anything Chinese-related, Chinese stocks, and this was long before what we have going on now. They're just liars. All the companies are liars. Doesn't mean you can't trade them. I get it. Stocks go up. I just don't do it. Personally, to me, it's like a religion. There's rules. Sometimes you, because of the rules, you don't get to do things you want to do. Um, I use Google. I use Google. But um, Google's done a lot of damage to my family. Long story, but 
financial, they owe us money, all kinds of stuff, man. Google is a shitty company that will rip off everyone they can and uh, lie. Like, it's just a horrible business. Now, that doesn't mean I don't use their product. Like, I got to go to this, you know, I get it. I'm just telling you my personal opinion. <laughs> he said he's staying for the roast session. Um, I also hate shipping stocks while I'm at it. There's a whole list of stocks that I hate. Um, I think we've covered them all, man. What did Google do? Man, Google does a lot of dirty shit. A lot of influencers, man, they'll just freeze their account. They'll, I mean, all kinds of stuff. Like Google is, does dirt. My favorite, I used to be a, uh, I used to advertise, you know, with Google AdWords and various things with affiliate programs. One of the, was one of my side hustles. And Google would come along and say, oh, that site doesn't have anything to do with your search terms, but anything that you put in, it would pull up eBay. So I was trying to do the same thing they were doing, like anything they put in would pull up this. And they'd say, you can't do that, but they let them do it for eBay. They're just cybersecurity. Yeah, I'm still in Cody, uh, XBI. Let's, mm. yeah, so biotechs are selling off. I don't think this sell off's going to go very far. I was hoping we'd see it come back to the 200. That would have been nice. There's a triple leverage fund for this, too, if you really want to have some excitement. That, man, from down here to here was up massive. Um, let's see. Why do I hate Bank of America? Dude, Bank of America are scumbags. If you do much real estate, they carried my first loans in real estate. Absolute scumbags. Not to mention, look up Bank of America and the robo foreclosures. Um, I had to move all my notes from there because of constantly they would charge me for insurance because they say they didn't get my insurance. This went on year after year. I would go through these giant ordeals, faxing over the insurance to the property. And then finally, I just went in and wrote a check for $180,000 and said, I'll never do business with you idiots again. It is a horrible bank. Um, I've known multi multiple landlords that have gotten all kinds of twisted trying to use that bank, man. They are predators, and then they're awful. They are a shady bank, dude, for real. Uh, shipping stocks. No, 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 I'm talking about like shipping, shipping, like boats, not not FedEx or UPS. I'm talking about like shipping, shipping, uh, like the actual shit on the back of a boat, LPI. Ooh, I like this one. So, yeah, this is – well, this is setting up nicer. This is basically Laredo Petroleum. Uh, yeah, I like this, bro. LPI. So this is back to that oil sector. I don't know about long-term. I don't think about the company. I mean I know about it because it's in my area. Look at this beautiful sideways. This is what you want to see at the bottom of a downtrend where you start to go sideways. And look, you'll see the MACD start to go the other way, right? The MACD is going up. Price is going sideways. Histogram up, price sideways. That's what we need to see in Intel. This stock looks great, man, LPI. That's what we need to see in Intel. We need the stop to stop dropping and this to start going up. And that tells you your bottom. So one that I'm in, FE, these guys are controversial right now. They were caught giving bribes to the Ohio State Legislator. This is a electrical company. And... $42 value, it's down to $29 while they sort out all these legal problems. I've taken a position in my buy and hold account because this could take a while. Yeah, my man said the U gold is now UGLDF. Absolutely. Triple leverage of gold. Uh, GoPro? Yeah, it's been on a run, man. I don't know that I – back to that anchor point. Whenever you get these – I mean, look at this. You kind of had your high right around in here. 
and then often you can just draw a line and that just holds price. So, you know, we need a breakout above this, but I like it. I like it. Top five G play. I've been playing Nokia for that. I'm sure there's better ways of playing it, but I've been doing Nokia. I've had, I'm up really nice in Nokia. I wish I had a lot more shares. I'm sure there's better ways to play it. Uh, the Nokia ETs I've been buying. Uh, I'm sure there's better ways to play no, no, the 5G for sure. I'm sure there's an ETF too that has a bunch in those. My man said ADP. I think we just looked at this one. Um, I like that Laredo though. ADP. Ugh. Hmm. Huh. It's below the 200. I like that. It's a big cap stock. I like that. It's sitting right at support. I like that. See that? Look at that. I like that. We're on an extreme RSI. I like that. So how we start going through here. What we don't have yet is that. The momentum is still to the downside. But we got our first day. So this could be the anchor day. I would really like to see that go the opposite. So you see it happen here? Run that up. And look, it was the bottom, right? So, you know, it's not perfect, but it does help. I would not do anything until that turn. That's what I'm waiting for on Intel to. Um, Makes sense? So, and if you noticed on BXRX, that was one of the things that I was just sitting there watching, man. I was just watching it. And you had to zoom in on it, but it had started to tick right in here and then it opened and I was watching it close it opened let's zoom in and the moment it got above here like right in there that histogram turned and I started buying and then once we got above the 20 I bought more so we kind of bought into the day so we'll see this is one that's run up 100% on me before so could be doing it again Riot for a Bitcoin play. BXRX. 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 R-I-O-T. So we're looking at Riot, blockchain play, or if you look at the blockchain, let's look at GBTC. So the money flow works with Bitcoin. Okay, this is Bitcoin ETF, the GBTC. So, you know, just like I always do, is it respect the 20? Yeah, look at these cycles. I mean, look at it. So, where are we at in Bitcoin right now? Bitcoin is breaking out. Here's the problem. 70 RSI, dude. What happened last time the RSI was 70? It went sideways. So, your buy was here. It ran up. Your target's previous high. This is a completed swing trade. See how we did that? There's your buy. Where's your target? Right there. You've hit it. Now you're on a 70 RSI. It's going to go sideways. <laughs> Works on Bitcoin. Works on Indian stocks. Works on Canadian stocks. Works on anything that moves with price. Works on anything that moves with price. What do we got here? My man Major said E T H E. Oh, oh, I didn't know about this one. I don't follow cryptos that close all right all right maybe i need to follow this one i used to put bitcoin in the newsletter and uh i stopped ethe is your what's how you say it erythium erythium this is stage two breakout man shit this here could double look at this up here i like this I mean, as a pure technical trade, this is what I would do. Pure technical. Like, I would, I, because you can't value these things. My stop would be right there. My target is right there. It's above the 20. Voila. There we go. That's how you do it. That would be simple as that. 
you know, of course, momentum's pulled back, but we're still holding the 20. I don't know what moves these things, so it's hard for me to value them. So that would be a pure technical trade because I don't know what val how to value them. Um, yeah, I like Intel. Need to see a little sideways. Somebody's catching it. Xerox, old slow mover. I'm in Xerox. Breaking out, baby. Look at this support zone, dude. This has been so solid. And so I got a lot of crybabies on this stock. And what I kept saying is you got to be patient. Every time it comes down into this zone, you should be buying it, not crying about it. But it never failed. Every time it got down into there, people would, oh, why aren't we, you know, they'd get all nervous instead of buying it. So first target, probably around, I don't know, 19. The stock's worth around $24. It's just, you just got to be patient. Is there a Russian dude that runs that? <laughs> That's, man, big, uh, uh, the cryptos are just crazy to me. This is Xerox XRX breaking out, but I wouldn't get overly excited about it. It is a slow mover. It is a slow mover. Um, but it's a trade. It's undervalued. That's It's just a value trade for me. XRP. Uh, I think you got your ticker wrong, homie. MHK. Ugh. Doesn't look good, bro. If you got in on the breakout, man, maybe give it a minute, but that looks like it's going downtown. Oh. Mel. I know you have some picks and you haven't given us one. All you've done is give us some anti-smoking picks. I don't really think that's very fair. Let's see. How come you're not giving us any picks, Mel? Uh, did we, yeah, we looked at guilt the other day. That's another one I like. I like LPI and then GILT. Mel does not have any biotech picks, or does she get off? Did you leave, Mel? Yeah, I mean, uh, DraftKings is solid. We're going to have to kick Mel out of the Money Flow Trading Society, I can see already. Car. Um... Let's see. Eh. I mean, you're just stuck there at the 200, bro. Stuck there at the 200. I mean, if you have some fundamental reason you think it's going higher, you know, it's kind of in limbo land right now. Holding support. I wouldn't be a seller. I wouldn't be a buyer. Am I stoned? No, I was waiting for a pick. Am I stoned? <laughs> Let's see. I yeah. I like. I mean, I would stay with it if you're buying it from this breakout because it's it's still holding that zone, right? So when something breaks out, I understand it may run up, pull back, run up. Like it takes a minute sometimes. So. For me, I'd be thinking, like, as long as this holds, I'm not worried at all. But whenever I buy a breakout, let's say I'm buying a breakout as a, just a trade. I backtrack it and go, where's the nearest support level? So there's the breakout. Now, if you're trading large positions and you're being, like, super uber trader, they're going to put a stop on the low of the previous day, usually. But with me... My stops are always like right here, and then I'm buying that breakout. Like so, I give a distance. So you need to adjust your size to handle that that width because I know it can run up, pull back a little, run up, pull back a little before it finally gets going. Super common, man. Um, I like to give them big scoops, big wide uh, ranges, you know. Um.
<laughs> Louis said they stand with Mel. She still has not given us a pick, though. I know she's got like 10 of them lined up. Uh, TDY, TDY. Ooh, big money stock. See, I knew you had one. Oh, we're going European, are we? I like this. Here's an example of the breakout. This is a classic example. This happens all the time. This is why I can't keep stops so tight. That's the breakout. It's very common for it to pull up, kind of pull back before then running. This is super common. So my stop would be right there. That'll freak people out because that's a pretty wide stop. So what do I got to do? I adjust my size so that I'm cool with this wide of a stop. I, I want to give it some room, man. You know, if it if it doesn't hold this, then cool, it's going down. Um, and you'll see that on stock after stock where it takes a minute. You know, look over here. We had the breakout on me. Well, that's not a good example. SNY. Let's see. What do we got here? Come on, man. What is this? Come on. It is above the 20, man. I'm going to give you that. That's what we're looking at, huh? That's what you spent all week working on? Let's see. Hmm. That looks like a stage three to me. Uh, <laughs> just, come on, man. Uh, MTZ. Here's another one. Start. There's your breakout. Starts to pull back, but it's holding. So if I would have bought this as a trade, you know, for trading, I'm buying stage two breakouts. That's what I like to do. My stop, look how solid this zone is right here. So there's no reason to have a stop that's above this. I mean, that's the nearest structure. You're using market structure. Uh, you're still above it. I like it. I don't know anything about it, but I'd stay with it. I know, not that many. It's an odd week for sure. Uh, BXRX, that's mine for the week. All right, Housewolf says M or F M C I. Let's see what we got going. On. Yeah, so here's another example. Like this is so super common. So you don't want these t stops too tight. So let's say you're buying that as your breakout. This is pretty far back, but I still would have had to go with it, man. I mean, you d that's a that's far back though. Maybe go in here, but we're still holding it, right? So even though it's just taking a minute. It'll take a second. This is a mortgage corporation, though, huh? I don't know anything about this one. Boy, that's, Gilead's back on my radar. Why? Why would Gilead be back on my radar? Look at that RSI. Straight down move. Would I buy it yet? Nope. Momentum's still to the downside. But if we back up to a weekly chart... You know, doesn't look any better coming into a previous, you know, if we're just doing the old previous support becomes, or previous resistance becomes support, you know, we're coming into a level here. So I'd keep an eye on Gilead. Uh, I think you're going to see some institutional money in there. It's a dividend stock. It's in my buy and hold. Uh, Intel and Gilead are on my watch list and Raytheon. What's your thoughts on legal and general? I have no idea what that means. What are we talking about? Uh-oh, Mel blaming Robin Hood. The Robin Hood effect. Oh, a Robin Hood story for you guys. A guy that I know never trades stocks. He does my, uh, remember that guy, if you watched my story yesterday, it was a dude putting some gutters on some houses for me that I just finished remodeling. He does all my gutters. And he uh, uh, he asked me, hey, man, you still trading stocks? And I was like, of course I am, man. I trade for life. And he goes, yeah, I'm trading too. And I was like, really? Now he's 58 years old, never traded in his life. I was like, well, what platform are you using? He said, Robin Hood. Well, get this. He tells me. 
he's thinking about putting a hundred thousand uh, dollars. What is the ticker for American Airlines? Anybody know? I don't trade this stock, so. Or was it United Airlines? Anyways, one of the major airline carriers. He's going to put $100,000 in that one stock. I was like, please don't do that, man. Please, what are you doing, man? And he said a buddy of his at work. Yeah, yeah, AAL. Couldn't think of the ticker. AAL. He said a buddy of his at work did it at the bottom and ran it up and sold it at $17. And made 100 He's a He's a... His main job is he's a fireman, and on the side, he has a side hustle. He does gutters. I use him. And he's going to put it all in because this stock's pulled back, and I was trying to show him charts, but he, this dude ain't using charts. They're just using the fact that it went from here to here, and now it's gone to here. So they expect it to go back to there, which, hey, it might. I mean, this is a pretty solid zone. I started buying air for the same reason, uh, and I was like, yo, man. I've never, uh, not a good idea, bro. Tell him to join the trading group. No, I don't like new people in the trade, like totally new, new, new. I don't like them brand that, you know, because he doesn't even use charts. So anyway, for whatever that's worth, my gutter guy who never trades stocks is going all in on the airlines <laughs> trade. <laughs> I've, I begged him to like break that up into like 10 stocks, but he, 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 you know, he's kind of focused on these airlines, man. C O O on YouTube. Let's see. O O on YouTube. Okay. That's a copper tray. We got, I like FSX better. I'm in Freeport. I trade that one for life, but COO, hmm. I mean, it's a trade on copper, right? I like Freeport because it's copper and gold. Um, I mean, that's pretty solid support, dude. Oh, we already covered DPST, man. That's good. Yeah, I'll keep you posted. I'm sure he'll start emailing me now. Shit, he'll probably outdo us all. No, I didn't sell him the book, man. I try not to. I honestly don't. <laughs> Zach said you only live once. Okay, my man says that GoDaddy's breaking out. Let's see. Oh, yeah. So here's another one. So we got GILT, solid stage two breakout. LPI, solid breakout. And GoDaddy is definitely breaking out. GDDY and BXRX. So I'm going to send out an email if you're on my email list. These are my takeaways from today's lives that were worth looking at. This is definitely a breakout. Now, the five hasn't crossed. If you have my book, you know, I talk about the five-day cross and the 20. That's kind of conservative. You know, in the book, I'm trying to get people the basics of trading. You know, in the book, I don't talk about stage one buys. I don't talk about it because I think it's more advanced I'm working on a new book called The Perfect Trade. I'm going to get more into that. Some stuff, you know, um, if you go to my bio link in Instagram, and I think it's on YouTube, upper right-hand corner, if you click that, you can scroll down and subscribe to the email. I'm trying to send more emails. I've been a little delinquent in that, but I'm definitely trying to send them on what we reviewed in the lives just to encourage people to get on them. Yeah, bro, I like this. See, this is a perfect setup, too. Where's the target? Boom. Easy money. Look at that support right there. Good eye, bro. Good eye. Now, was it Marcus? Were you using the money flow and catching that, or were you already watching that using the 20? Yeah, the email list is just it's free over there, man. I don't I'm not overly aggressive with emails. If I see a stock I like, I've been trying to do a, a, a you know, I have this thing called trade of the week. Sometimes there's no new trades and I just stick with the low one from last week, you know. So the trade of the week this week is DPST. Um
That's a, that's a breakout right there. It hasn't crossed yet, but look, you know, MACD's crossing, momentum's changing. Uh, okay, making sure you're the same, Marcus. So we got, you know, there's six things I'm looking at. If four out of the six are up, I'll take the breakout. Um, you know, I like it. Good deal. I don't know what the value on the company is. Boy, they're aggressive salesmen too, Jesus. I use GoDaddy every day they're trying to sell me something. You know who's the most aggressive? Grant Cardone sends emails three times a day, every day, all day long. I get three to four emails a day from that dude. Every day. Seven days a week. I added it up. I saved them all in a folder last week, and he sent me like 30 emails. My God, dude. Calm down. I started replying to him. Calm down. Like, why do you guys send so many damn emails? Um, let's look at SLS. Woo. SLS life science group. Wow. It ran up to four bucks from three bucks and then back to three fifty. Wow. I like the way this trades, man. I like this one. Let's do save as. Keep an eye on that one. Yeah. If anybody else is on his email. Man, he sends a lot of emails, dude. It's like, calm down. F-L-I-R. Yeah, I like Flair. Flair's breaking out, too. I saw this one the other day, but... Uh, what did I call it? Flare? Why did I call it that? F L I R. I guess you could call it that. Flyer. Put these in the list. He blew out. Why do you like it? Why do I like what, bro? I think I missed you on that. So let's check out JCOM. So GoDaddy, G D D Y, Gilt, G I L T, Laredo, uh, L P I. BXRX, FLIR, these are all solid looking breakouts. So then I would take that list and go research them a little bit and make sure you like what they're doing. You think they got upside, all that good stuff, right? You want to kind of JCOM. JCOM. Breaking out, not quite there, but I like it. Global communications. God, that was a brutal downtrend, though, man. Jesus. Everything's turning up. Oh, man. I don't know. I like the, the chart, though. I like the chart, man. Earnings on Tuesday. Woo! So how would I play that? I would just take a small position. If you know earnings are the next day, I don't actually pay much attention to earnings until after the fact. But Fox is one of... I know some of our uh, Money Flow members are in this one. Uh, blue cap below the 200. Got an easy target here. I like Fox. I like it. Um, I mean, they created The Simpsons. Who doesn't like The Simpsons? Uh, yeah, that J... That, brutal downtrend huh that would it makes me concerned when the market's going up that it's something's going down you know but it doesn't always mean a bad but yeah v we already checked v v e r s i'm i'm long that that's a breakout i've been adding to that one uh v e r i this is a casino play okay or no we're talking about something different i had something else on the brain i like I like this setup though. See, this looks like just like uh, DraftKings, right? Big ass run up. I mean, look at this chart. It's like almost exact. Hasn't broke though, like DraftKings did. Momentum's the upside. I have no idea what this does, but I like the look of it. So, I mean, you could call this a stage one and buy in here. That's what I would do. If I was like this stock, we got solid support. It never got extreme, though. Momentum changed the other way. 
things are starting to turn and we're holding support, you know, I'd be willing to take a shot and put a stop loss underneath, you know, in this area. And if you break out, you got an easy target if you're trading it. Four minutes left. Thank you, Mel. Uh, this is V-E-R-I. Let me keep an eye on that. V-E-R-I. I have to go look and see what it's worth. I mean, someone thought it was worth $20 at one point. I love that. You know, that to me, that's a classic swing trade. Big move. You got a little profit taking in here. New people come in, wish they'd have caught the big move. And then this is how stocks, you know, climb. This is how they work. I mean, this is how it works. Very similar to DraftKings. Uh, v E R I. I like that. Let's keep an eye on that. And that Arith E T H E. I want to keep an eye on that, man. That Lerithium, but you say it's run by Russians. Man, I always feel like Russians are about to rob me. If you ever meet Russians. Who's a hater? Let's see. Dude, be honest, I'm out of INGN. That stock has just been a serial disappointment. What are you quitting for, Mel? You can't quit. You've been drafted. You're under contract. Oh, you're under contract. Let's see. All the banks look the same. Uh, not true, though. Morgan Stanley looks the strongest, but like JP Morgan, Citi. I like the bank trade. I'm, in, I'm doing the regionals, but 26-year-old um, Russian dude, huh? Yeah, that doesn't make you feel very good. 26-year-old Russian guy. Uh, applied therapeutics. Okay, this may be one to keep an eye on here, man. You got a tradable bottom here. See how everything started? See how the momentum started changing? And the stock stopped dropping. And now you're getting this kind of turning effect. This is a tradable, like... If you do this one, though, do a hard stop because you're trying to buy the bottom. I like that, man. What is that? A-P-L-T. Keep an eye on that. There you go. My man wrote them down. I like that. If you're doing pure technical trades, you got the extreme RSI. The RSI is coming out. You got a bottom to trade on. You got a couple bars there. Everything, see, that makes me feel good. And if it gets stopped out, well, we took a shot, right? And then you just get stopped out and wait for the next one. Or if you think the company's worth $47, let's say it, you research it and it is, I might only sell half if it breaks down with the idea that I'm going to do it again when it stops falling again. We'll look up Kex. My time's about to run out here. Started a position on Friday. Good eye, man. Good eye. And see, now we call that a stage four, starting a stage one. You know, you're taking a shot at catching it literally right there, right at the apex of the two. And that's stage one trading. It can be risky, but it's the most profitable. And I, I take a smaller position here. We start to move up and we break. I would add to it. And then you're adding to a winner, which is always a good idea. Good deal. All right, guys, you guys be dead. Or to be dead. I'm looking at the statement here. Are, are you Delta and love dead? Um, no, I like the airline trade. Be good. I'm reading the statement over here, be dead, because it's uh, somebody texted in. That's the problem when you're trying to read and talk at the... Talk and read at the same time, right? What do they say? Trade great. It's the only thing that pays, right? All right. I like, and I like the look of that. That a might do some research on it. The therapeutics, which ESPR that's been selling off is a therapeutics too, which I like ESPR. So they may be in the same boat. That's probably what it, what's going on there. But the, I just like this chart. It's nice. All right. 
Be good.